Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about my top five favorite bass fishing lures of all time. If I could only have five bass fishing lures to fish with for the rest of my life, these would be them right here. We're going to run through them, which scenarios they work in. I believe these give me the most versatility to catch fish all over the place. Um, I got a comment on one of my videos. Someone had asked what's my top five favorite bass fishing baits. So that's how today's video came to be. And if there's something that you would like to see or a question you'd like to ask me, go ahead and hit it in the comments down below. Uh, and it could potentially turn into a video in the future. So starting with number one right here, this is one of my favorites I have used for years. It's so versatile. I've caught smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass on it and that's gonna be specifically a square bill crankbait. We're gonna be kind of specific with these. I'm not gonna be like jig, crankbait, worm, uh, that covers everything in bass fishing. I'm gonna give you specific ideas of like what I like to fish with. Number one being a square bill crankbait. Spring, pre-spawn fishing, I use it like crazy. A lot of red colors. Um, this is my square bill box right here. Absolutely loaded, different sizes, colors, shapes, all different stuff in there. Um, different sounds, but ultimately I use it to bounce off rock and wood. Doesn't work in grass as much, but springtime, that's when it's gonna shine for me. I'm really gonna throw that red color crankbait um, or chartreuse, depending on if the water's dirty or not, bounce it off wood and catch those pre-spawn fish. As the spawn comes around, I've actually started using like bluegill colored square bills close to the spawn. And you can mimic those fish that are chasing bluegills off the beds um, and be able to catch fish doing that. It's not as effective once those fish are really focused on spawning, they kind of stop hitting those moving baits for a while. And then when you get into the post spawn, you're gonna have shad spawn eating fish and you're going to have bluegill bed chasing fish. So again, your shad patterns and your bluegill patterns will come back in there. Fall, excellent time to throw shad patterns, square bill crankbaits, fish get shallow, wanna feed, and they're looking for food for the fall. Um, so I catch a ton of fish on a square bill crankbait there. I've caught them in rivers, lakes, all over the place on a square bill crankbait. Um, if you have rock in your lake, riprap, any of that stuff, bridges, there will always be fish willing to eat a square bill crankbait around that type of stuff. Um, I just absolutely love throwing a square bill crankbait. There's a color to mimic whatever type of forage you could possibly run into. Um, size as well, I have everything from, these are all six cents versions, but I have everything from the 25 mini, which is a very, very small bait fish profile. The 50 is what I use the most. The 100X, if you need a little bit bigger profile. And then they even have the mini mag square bill, which is even bigger if you need something to mimic big shad that those fish are chasing. Um, so covers a bunch of stuff. The only downfall with the square bill is you're covering water five foot or less. So if those fish are a little bit deeper, you're not gonna be able to get that bait down there. Um, but like I said, instead of me just saying crankbait and covering everything, we're gonna get specific. If I could only choose one crankbait, this would be the one. Jumping into my number two bait here. Again, we're not gonna be broad. This is gonna be a specific one. And that is going to be the Six Sense Hybrid Jig. I did a video on this thing recently. It has quickly become my new favorite jig. This thing is amazing in all types of cover. It comes in a 3 8 a half, and a 3 quarter ounce size, which allows you to fish this thing anywhere. It also comes in a variety of colors. So I can fish this as I was doing down in Florida. I could fish it as a swim jig. Um, you can use the 3 8 ounce size for some lighter flipping, some shallower water. You can use the half ounce size as a lighter football jig, dragging it offshore, or like a good flipping jig. And then the three quarter, I use it for a football jig offshore, and I use it as a grass flipping jig. One thing we do a ton up here in the Northeast is flip deep grass edges in like eight to 10 foot of water. Uh, a lot of times we're using like punch rigs and stuff. You can use this jig and flip those deeper grass edges because of the triangular shaped head with the inline line tie, and it has a heavy hook on the back here. Um, just a perfect jig. It allows you to do everything you need. If you only could have one jig and fish the rest of your life, this thing would get it done for almost all scenarios. I love pairing it up with the Sixth Sense Bongo, um, but depending on your conditions, you can change the trailer. I've used stuff like the Prawn or other types of Beaver or Trunk style trailers in cold water, but this guy right here has a pretty mild flap to it on the claws, so it perfectly matches up. It hangs just where you need it to. You can fish it as a swim jig. You can fish it as a flipping jig. Um, it'll have the movement that you need, but it's not too much. So I'll start fishing this thing 
at really as soon as the ice comes off up here, you can drag it really slow and flip laydowns where you might get a bite or two of those fish that are just starting to move up and get the warmth from the sun. Um, and then I'll fish it all the way through back until the ice comes back on again. I, you catch a fish on a jig, no matter what time of year, they will always eat a jig at some point. Um, you can pretty much always find a jig eating fish. So that little combo right there has caught me a ton of fish all last year. Love it. Great little setup there. Uh, and there'll be many more fish catches on this bait to come this year. So let's get into number three here. Uh, last hard bait, I guess you could say. Um, and it's one of my favorites to use. And that is going to be the chatterbait. I love throwing a chatterbait. This one is a jackhammer. It does not have to be a jackhammer. I use the Z-Man Elites a lot too. They're like $7.99. Um, I've used the chatterbait customs. All of them are good options. Even the Mini Max is a good option. Any type of chatterbait, whatever you like to use, they just give you the versatility to fish literally everything with. So while you can't fish this square bill crankbait through grass, now you can open up your grass fishing game with a chatterbait. You can fish it around rock and wood as well, uh, but the chatterbait really gets it done in the grass and it comes in a variety of colors and sizes again. So I have three eighth ounce versions if I'm fishing really shallow. My go-to is a half ounce version, uh, pretty much gets the job done everywhere between three to 10 foot of water is where I'm gonna fish that. Um, and that's usually where I'm fishing a chatterbait anyway. Uh, comes in white if you need a shad pattern around the shad spawn, white and chartreuse if you need some dirty uh, watercolors, even black and blue, fire craw now you can fish in the springtime. But my go-to, especially up here in the Northeast, if you fish in the Northeast and do not have a green pumpkin chatterbait, you are making a huge mistake. It is an absolute amazing color. Ponds, lakes, does not matter. If your fish are feeding on bluegill and there's grass in your pond, they will eat a green pumpkin chatterbait. It's an absolute must have. Um, I picked it over a spinnerbait solely because a spinnerbait mostly imitates shad. This you can make imitate anything. So that is one reason why I did pick it over a spinnerbait for this video, but a spinnerbait is an awesome one as well. My go-to trailer for fishing on a chatterbait is the Yamamoto Zacco four inch version. Uh, they make the three inch now if you wanna fish it on the back of the Mini Max, if you like a smaller profile. But if you're fishing the Jackhammers or the Z-Man Elites, the four inch is the way to go. It matches up perfectly and it is just the perfect action. It's almost like a flat sided crankbait. So no matter how cold the water gets, you can slow roll this bait super slow with this trailer and it will still get bit. I've caught fish right after ice out, just crawling this thing on the bottom in ponds. They think it's a bluegill swimming by and they'll grab it and you can catch a couple fish doing it. And then they'll really turn on on this thing springtime through the post spawn, even in the spawn time. Um, they love a chatterbait. And then the fall again, excellent time to throw it. So let's get into my last two picks here. These are gonna be for when the fishing's a little bit tougher, uh, soft plastic choices gotta have some soft plastics when you're fishing. So let's cover the two that I have right here. And the first one is going to be, no surprise, some type of stick worm. This is the six inch clout, the 5.4 version. It comes in a six inch size now too, but I actually prefer the five. Uh, it's just a more versatile bait and gets the job done anywhere. So you can fish this thing as a wacky rig, which is what I do 95% of the time with this thing, skipping docks, throwing it around shallow cover. It just gets bit. So you gotta have one of these. Um, green pumpkin's an excellent color. Black and blue is another good color. Really with those two colors right there, you can cover all of of your fishing that you need with the stick worm. Um, I fished it other ways as well. Light Texas rigs for spawning fish, like an eighth ounce Texas rig. You can drag it on bottom and fish some big spawning flats and just pull it in front of their faces when they're on beds. Um, I've fished it down in Florida with like a three eighths ounce weight on it and flipped heavy cover and you're able to punch some heavier cover with that because it's just a straight tail worm. It goes through pretty much everything. So if you peg it up on a bobber stop and some braid, you can flip heavier grass and cover some water with a stick worm. Again, it does not have to be the Sixth Sense version as with any of these baits, uh, but they're an excellent option and also a sponsor of the channel. So if you'd be interested in helping out the channel at all, you can use my code Quince. You'll save 10% off your order on their website. But if you have a different favorite stick worm, Go with that. Just use a, a jig, a, crank, a square bill crankbait. All of these are general baits that other companies make as well. So if you're interested in something else or you have these baits already, these are my five, five favorite types of baits. And I'm also just throwing in some brands as well. 
Lastly, let's cover my favorite bait probably of all time. If I had one bait, it would probably be this next one. I catch more fish on this bait every year um, and it just seems to always work no matter where I'm at, what lake I'm fishing. I will always find a fish that will bite this next bait here. And that bait is going to be the drop shot. I've used the drop shot for smallmouth, spotted and largemouth bass all over the country. I've caught fish on a drop shot in Florida. I've caught uh, smallmouth up here on a drop shot in the Northeast. I've caught spotted bass down on Lake Hartwell throwing a drop shot on Blueback Herring Lake. So literally any lake that I have ever been to, a drop shot will work. I've caught fish on the Tennessee River using a drop shot. I've caught fish in Texas using a drop shot. They work everywhere. Um, so there's a couple different ways that I like to rig it up depending on what I'm going to be doing. So if I'm fishing open water, smallmouth bass, spotted bass, specifically those fish that roam big open flats, that's when I'm gonna use these two items right here. A six cents drop shot hook, just the open number one like mosquito style hook. And then just any type of four inch small drop shot worm. It doesn't matter what you like to use, um, but just some type of little drop shot worm that's very finesse profile. This is the glitch from Sixth Sense, but you could use literally any type of worm you like. I've used Dream Shots, I've used Shad Shape Worms. There's all different kinds out there. Just find a little four inch worm that will work great on a drop shot nose hook it right on that hook right there with whatever size weight you need to get it to the bottom, but make sure you use the lightest weight you can to keep it natural. And that is the setup right there. I've caught a ton of fish on that little setup, mostly smallmouth and spotted bass. I don't do that for largemouth very often. If I'm using the four inch version, I'm gonna be fishing for smallmouth mostly, the open hook style. When I go to fish for largemouth with a drop shot, that's when I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna to go to the Gamagatsu rebarb hook here. This is a Texas rig hook. It's a light wire straight shank hook that you can still set the hook on a spinning rod. That's what I'm gonna put on there. And then I'm going to use a four and a half to six inch robo worm. Uh, different colors, whatever you like. I just picked out this one right here out of my box, but I have a whole box of different colors of robo worms. You can pick whatever color you like. The Texas rigged version, you can fish it through grass, you can fish it through brush piles, wood, whatever type of cover you might have, making this the most versatile technique that I probably have in my box. Um, I can throw an eighth ounce drop shot weight on with this little rebarb hook and fish it up very shallow. I've done it on the Chesapeake Bay in literally a foot and a half of water, dragged a drop shot through pieces of wood and caught fish in a foot and a half of dirty water on a drop shot with a pink worm. And I've gone out to Lake Erie and caught fish in 35 foot of water on a drop shot with a three eighths or half ounce weight and a nose hooked little four inch bait. So super versatile bait. It'll catch fish no matter where you're at. That is one of, that has to be in my top five. Honestly, all five of these baits will catch a ton of fish everywhere you go. I catch, mo they're always tied on my rods. I catch fish on them all year long. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video talking about my five favorite baits. Let me know what your favorite bait is down below in the comments. And if you want to see the latest edition of the top three baits of the month, go ahead and check this video out right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing tips coming up.